When war met weather, the real battle often wasn't fought against bullets. It was fought against the elements. Mud, rain, sleet and freezing wind could do more damage to a fighting unit than enemy fire ever did. During the early 20th century, especially through World War I and World War II, soldiers learned this the hard way. Trench foot, hypothermia and exhaustion wiped out more men than combat. Yet hidden in the stories of the front lines is a piece of forgotten ingenuity that quietly turned the tide for survival. The oilcloth shelter. It wasn't fancy, it wasn't high-tech, but it worked. Soldiers called it their stormproof skin, a simple sheet that kept men alive when nature turned hostile. The oilcloth began as a sailor's trick before becoming a soldier's lifeline. Long before it hit the battlefield, oilcloth was a staple of the sea. Sailors used it to waterproof sails, cover cargo, and make crude rainwear. By the 18th and 19th centuries, armies took note. They needed something lightweight, weatherproof, and strong enough to endure both mud and fire. The solution was simple cotton canvas, soaked in a blend of boiled linseed oil and natural resins, then hung to cure until it formed a flexible, rubbery coating. The result was a fabric that repelled water like glass, but could be folded, sewn, and repaired easily in the field. When the First World War broke out, soldiers quickly realised that standard canvas tents and wool blankets weren't cutting it in the endless rain and freezing trenches of Europe. The oilcloth tarp changed that. It became the backbone of portable shelters, rain capes, ground covers, and even makeshift stretchers. A standard-issue oilcloth sheet measured about six feet by seven feet and weighed just under three pounds, light enough for a man to carry, rolled on his pack. Two or three soldiers could button their sheets together to make a lean-to or tent, and when the storms hit, those same sheets could be wrapped around a foxhole to create an instant waterproof bunker. The secret wasn't just the fabric. It was the system soldiers built around it. The oilcloth's genius came from how adaptable it was. It wasn't just one man's tarp. It was a communal tool. Soldiers developed standard methods for connecting them edge to edge using brass eyelets and wooden toggles. With six sheets, they could form a tight, low-slung A-frame tent. The inside stayed dry because condensation rolled off rather than soaking in, and the heavy oil finish kept the wind from cutting through. In the trenches, soldiers learned to dig narrow ditches along the sides of their shelters so that rain would drain away. They'd lay one oilcloth flat as a ground sheet and suspend another above it, creating a small but fully dry sleeping space. The key was layering ground cloth, straw or brush for insulation, then a second sheet as a roof. In practice, a group of men could go from drench to dry in under 30 minutes with nothing more than oilcloths and rope. What made it stormproof wasn't invincibility. It was design efficiency. The oilcloth allowed air to circulate just enough to prevent suffocation, while still blocking water and wind. Soldiers stationed in places like Passchendaele or Monte Cassino swore by it because it reduced trench rot and let them sleep through downpours. It turned a desperate night into an endurable one. The original recipe for oilcloth required materials that were simple but, well, dangerous to handle. Linseed oil was boiled with lead or manganese dryers, substances that accelerated curing but could be toxic if misused. 
Artisans and army suppliers would stretch the canvas on wooden frames, brush it repeatedly with warm oil, and leave it in ventilated sheds for weeks until it formed a waterproof film. The process created a fabric that could last for years, even in salt water or mud. In the field, soldiers often tried to repair torn oilcloths using improvised methods. They'd mix linseed oil with ash or even melted wax, applying it to the tear and pressing it flat with the heated base of a mess tin. This kind of bushcraft maintenance kept the tops serviceable even under bombardment. In some instances, soldiers scavenged abandoned oilcloths from destroyed camps and used them to line trenches or wrap around ammunition boxes to keep powder dry. Today, modern oilcloth substitutes use beeswax, soy wax, or boiled tongue oil for a safer, cleaner result. If you're a survivalist or historian wanting to recreate this old technique, the steps are straightforward. Start with a tightly woven cotton canvas. Warm a mix of one part boiled linseed oil and one part beeswax until melted, then brush it evenly onto the fabric. Hang it outside to cure for at least 48 hours, then buff with a dry cloth. The result will be a durable, waterproof tarp, nearly identical to the ones used in wartime. For all our synthetic fabrics and high-tech gear today, the old oil cloth still outperforms many in real-world conditions. It doesn't melt near fire. It breathes just enough to prevent condensation, and it lasts for decades if maintained. Modern bushcrafters, hunters and survivalists still use it for lean-tos, rain cloaks and ground covers because it works under pressure, just as it did in war. One of the best lessons from its military use is redundancy. Soldiers carried the oilcloth not as a single-purpose item, but as a flexible survival system. The same square of fabric could be a poncho tent pack, cover stretcher, or even a water collector when laid out during rain. This principle, designing every tool for multiple uses, is what makes a survival setup efficient and reliable. If you were to apply this concept today, it's simple. Build your outdoor gear around versatility, not specialization. A single treated oil cloth or wax canvas sheet can replace half your pack if you know how to use it. Learn to tie efficient knots, fold it for quick setup, and treat it regularly with oil or wax to maintain its stormproof quality. When historians open the archives or examine surviving field kits, they're often surprised by how many soldiers carried that single dark oil-stained sheet. It doesn't look like much, no zippers, no insulation, no camouflage pattern, but its value was measured in lives saved from cold, from rain, and from the relentless misery of exposure. It's a perfect example of low-tech brilliance born out of necessity. Even now, over a century later, the same principles apply whether you're a soldier, camper, or prepper. Durability, adaptability, and discipline keep you alive longer than technology ever will. The oilcloth wasn't a relic. It was a philosophy. And the men who used it knew that sometimes survival depended not on having more, but on knowing how to use less. If you enjoyed uncovering this piece of forgotten military ingenuity, subscribe to Backyard Wisdom, give this video a like, and share it with fellow history and survival enthusiasts. There are still countless lessons from the past waiting to be rediscovered. Simple tools, clever minds, and the will to endure against the storm.